All right, so the first piece is here. Two turbo. <laughs> My Honda. Oh man. That eBay manifold. Let's uh, take it out. Ooh, take a look at that. Stainless Ram Horn T3 Turbo Manifold with external wastegate. And this looks pretty damn good. It honestly looks even better than the photos. It's so shiny. And the welds look very nice. I mean, we're only planning on pushing like 8 PSI. So I'm not worried about that cracking or anything, but it looks real good. Damn. Welds on the inside and outside. So, initially we had a problem of the power steering bracket here getting in the way. It was just a little bit too close, so we just took the bolt out and we ground it down so that this can clear the bracket because I want to keep the power steering. And honestly, even without this bolt, it's super secure. It's got a bottom mount. I really think it's going to work just fine like that. And now we got the manifold on with the gasket. We're going to hit the bolts with some ANCs and then lock this thing in place for hopefully the last time. All right, so we got every bolt here tightened down. Finally, took forever because of just the way this is shaped and stuff. Some places I could use a socket wrench, some places I couldn't. So we hit this with the grinder. So now we've got perfect clearance here and it really doesn't look too bad. It looks perfectly stock from here. Uh, gaskets on, we got brand new nuts or bolts, my bad, with some washers. All tightened down and nice. Now we're just waiting on the turbo to come in and the oil and feed lines next. And once that's plumbed up, we'll just be waiting on the intercooler and downpipe, wastegate two. And then it'll be time to make some boost. So, we got the turbocharger. Um, Came in quite the box. Looks like your mom's home day four boxes. But it's a turbo charger. So we're gonna open it up. Alright, we got the exhaust studs and gaskets. Put those to the side. Be a box instead of box, so I'll take the thing that comes in. Some oil. That's kind of good, I guess. Oh, <sighs> uh, <laughs> there's the snail. see here turbocharger t3 t4 0.63 ar 
Nice comes with the caps. Make sure everything stays nice there. Well greased turbo, I must say. Lots of lube here. Fuck. It's a little heavy. I think it said shipping weight is 30 pounds. I like that. Alright. First shake. Doesn't feel there's any play. Just the tiniest maybe pinch of movement, which is good. You don't want everything to be too tight. Spins free. Oh, that is also the exhaust side. Ugh, I don't really want to get my sneaky, stay, greasy fingers on everything. Let's open up the front. That's, that's the money shot right there. Oh yeah. Turbo. Oh yeah. No play at all. Same as the bag. Tiniest movement. Spins free. Take a look at all those spins. Make sure everything looks proper. Nothing looks damaged or immediately concerning. Alright, slip that down, wash my hands, we'll get that in the car. Okay, so we got the turbo installed. You got it clocked with the inlet on this side, exhaust on this side. Not what I had originally planned. I thought I would be able to put it the other way and I already ordered the downpipe for this side. So, I'm buying another one. We're probably just gonna chop that one up, make it fit this way. And uh, we'll try our best to try and make it pretty. I've welded exhaust stuff before works but I really want to try and be as nice as possible so we'll see most of it will just be under the car anyway but we're gonna have to do something to get the exhaust there but otherwise I'm very excited to have it in there looks good you can see it just peeking through the grill It's a 0 0.63 turbine AR, 0 0.50 inlet, 050 5-bolt flange, T3 turbo. And we're still waiting on a bunch of parts to come in, waiting on the feed and return line, which we'll be able to set up for that. We've got hoses coming in. We'll eventually be ordering the intercooler and coilovers for this car. Well, I'll also need the wastegate to come in, but, so that's what we'll pick up next when those parts come in. I'll we'll start getting them on. So today we have received the fuel pressure regulator, which is going to replace this stock one here. It just attaches to the fuel rail as an actuator from the intake manifold vacuum and a return line. We got this nice blue adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Gonna remotely mount it. Comes with adapter pieces and hardware. Got this one on eBay, of course. So let's uh, install this and I'll 
see just how good it is. So, got the regulator in. Basically, just took out the old one. I cut the pressure line to shorten it a little bit to hold it onto the manifold. And then we just inserted it into the return line. And that's holding it in a pretty good spot. I think I like that. Now, next is the actual fuel feed. Now, the kit I got was, you know, universal. So these lines here need to be straight across. Just like the stock fuel regulator. Or else this doesn't line up. It doesn't bolt up. So we're going to trim this. Drill some holes. And uh, make it like this one. And we can just put that on. Take the O-ring from this one. Put it in here. Use that portion here. That's our feed. And then run the hose to the back, and that will be installed. All right, so we drilled two holes up here on the bracket so that we could mount it in line the way it's supposed to be. We put that gasket in there, and now it's all lined up. We made sure by looking in and straight through the top, lined up, bolted down. Now we just have to run the hose from here to the back and clamp it down and that will be the fuel pressure regulator install. Oh yeah. Okay, so we have four new spark plugs here. The are BKR7E 4644. These are supposed to be one step Holder equivalents to these stock spark plugs and some research on that this is the one they said to go with so we're going to gap them down to 0 0.030 with our little gauge and put them in super easy to do I'm sure you changed spark plugs before so let's do that
All right, so the new spark plugs have been installed and tightened down snugly. We're gonna have to take the valve cover off later, so that's why I'm not screwing everything down here, but we got the spark plug wires in and kind of routed the way that I want them to be, so they're a little bit tucked out of the way and with the cover on, it's gonna look super nice. Uh, yeah, so before I start it up for the first time, I want to pour the oil over top of the camshafts and everything directly just to make sure it gets oil and lubrification in itself because it has been sitting now for like six months or more. So do that, fill it with oil, then we'll put the valve cover gasket on and fill it up. Fill it up. Put the valve cover gasket on, close it up. The last time, we'll be able to fill it with coolant, oil, and that's all we need after. I just need to finish up the drain line for the turbo, and we'll have to get a pipe for the wastegate welded together. <laughs> So yesterday we did the front control arms on the Civic, got them installed and pulled the camber out a little bit, uh, make it straight. I don't know why my fingers are supposed to help you visualize that, but they're installed now. I might still want to pull a little more camber out. I'll show you that in a minute, but today we're going to be working on the rear arms. And on this side, we also had to we also had to flare one of the brake lines because it snapped at the end, but there was enough left to just add another nut on it and put that on to save it. Show you that, but mainly taking out the rear arms and of course they're seized like most Honda bolts. So I'll we'll show you how we deal with that. Okay. So car's in the air, got the jack stands on, got the wheel off and we've started working on the upper arm here. So the two bolts in the rear came out easy as, you know, normally I'd say half, three quarters of the time, these bolts do behave, maybe take a little bit of heat, but these ones came right out. But this front one with the bushing, the bolt always seizes within that bushing. So when you try and spin the one side, it just, this will start to unthread, but it will push these two tabs out and that's obviously not good. So what we did here was cut this on each side and then we can just pop the arm here straight out and undo it from the back. So we're just going like this. See, comes right out. Unbolt it from the back, we'll pull that out and then we just have to spin this bolt and this nut off and she's free and we can install the new arms without damage, having damaged the actual piece here. I maybe nicked it on the side a little bit, but it's not bent. Nothing's shaved off. Nothing in the front is cut into. Okay, we did that with a angle grinder, so it's really not hard. Just, I hate using the fucking angle grinder. It makes a total mess, and this shoots a lot of sparks cutting through this bolt, so. You know, if you have to do that with your car, enjoy. But now we're going to install the arm and then we'll move on to the other side. All right, so we have the new rear control arms here. But before we actually put them in... Ah, shut up radio. We want to line these up with the old arms and measure from here to here to match them up. If you're just throwing these in, you want to make sure they're the same length as the original ones. And 
for my purposes, we're using it to adjust the camber positively because I don't want these wheels to have any camber to it at all. Right now, there is the slightest amount. Well, it's more visible when it's actually on the ground and being compressed, but we want to take it out. But I think I have to definitely roll my fenders first before I can even pull any camber or else it's just going to touch that. So we're just going to line up the old ones, measure these two points here to here, make them the same, and then we can throw these in. God snow. Cool name, bro. But you know, eBay stuff, it works. It looks good. And I'm not driving this car every day. So, worth it. When you ask me to bring that guacamole to the party, I'll say no. No. If you ask me bring the guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no, no. That shit's too expensive.